Welcome back to the Anachroschism. When we left off last time, the party was getting ready to depart Sheepstop Hollow, Grail's home, where a multitude of things happened. And some of those things are going to continue to have implications even as we go forward. But with the a, a full breakfast and a, a somewhat nice morning relative to everything else that's happened at the very least, uh, <laughs> you guys load up the cart, toss on the prisoners from the barn, uh... With the five of them all in the cart, it's going to be a tight fit. But it is doable if you kind of toss them in a, like a sort of a cuddle puddle in the middle and then everybody else sits along the outside oh. of the cart. What? Not a good analogy. Cuddle puddle is not a, a good term? No? <laughs> well. <laughs> well, there he goes. Oh, wait. We broke Mike. It's fine. <laughs> that, that, I didn't think that was going to be the response I got, but that's where we are now. Um... <laughs> With, I'm assuming, Lena driving. Yes, I am driving. The horses seem happy to see you. Yay, I am happy to see them too. <laughs> I think they tolerated Tessie and they sort of liked Thea, but you're number one. Ah. <laughs> for now. <laughs> for now. Uh, you guys start making your way north. You know, it's about a four-hour-ish journey going directly to Glen Cogo, maybe a little more, um, just from the way that you guys who were there came back. Obviously, on your first trip out there, you went through another city first. But uh, So, I suppose just for the sake of expediency, anything anybody wants to do during the trip? Not touch Grail. Yeah. Leer threateningly at all the prisoners. Grail, I have a series of questions that are all probably going to be offensive. So, I figured better to just get them all out at one go and... And uh, kind of gets it out of my system. <laughs> now that you're would, sure. prepped. How do you respond to that? <laughs> <laughs> Yay? Uh, okay. <laughs> when, when did your grandmother pass? I don't know. When did she pass? <laughs> It's a very sensitive subject. I have lots of questions family. for the DM, I have a feeling. <laughs> yes, uh, today I will be playing the role of Grail. <laughs> I am Grail Light Ghost, y'all. Um, Grail's grandmother passed seven, eight years ago. Uh, specifically in relation to when the fire and all the weird stuff started happening at Grail's farm. I think they were separated by a few years. Okay. The fire was... Yeah. A couple of years ago tops, right? It was relatively recent, maybe even it was, a year. It was pretty recent, yeah. Yeah. About and a year. The grandmother was, you know, before that by a pretty decent margin. And when when did your brother pass, uh, Cormac? Uh, that was some years even earlier before the fire. And you said it was an illness. What, do you have any specifics? What brought it on? What were the symptoms? It... I mean, it seemed to me like a garden variety kind of, like a yellow fever of some kind. It was, I mean, nothing extravagant or out of the ordinary, really. It's probably all fine. i just been thinking a lot, and I think what just happened can cast a, a different sort of light on maybe events that have, uh, that we think we know with your history. So I just... Trying to see if there's anything that maybe we haven't picked up on before or thought about. Yeah, yeah um, I kind of have been thinking about that too, but I can't really make any connections, at least not right now. But Because uh, the thing we know is your grandma was tied pretty deeply to magic and, and arcane arts and things that were going on in this house. It skipped your mother's generation and you seem to have inherited some. Right, and it, it does seem like my, my mother was telling me, and I had an inkling to this. I mean, my grandmother did give me the necklace uh, to protect me. Uh, I do wonder if maybe there are some protective measures in play that I don't know about, that my mom doesn't know about. It's unclear. She was a woman of many secrets, this grandmother of yours. Seems like it, yeah. What was her name, so I can stop referring to her as your grandmother? Has not actually I don't have come a name up yet. For it's Valeria. Uh, I have sort of, I didn't want to just drop in the middle of the conversation because I've been conscious of the fact that we keep calling her like Gran or Grandma. Uh, her, yes, your grandmother's name is Valeria. Okay, well, Valeria, 
could be connected to all of this more than we know yet, but all I have now is conjecture. Yeah, I think that's all we uh, all we do have right now, but uh, I do have a feeling she plays a major, if not the most pivotal role in all of this. I always think it's interesting the the actions and deeds of those in the past continue to guide the future. <laughs> yeah, I mean. it's uh, it's kind of maddening, I must say. And I just kind of like nod and like return to looking pensive out of the back of the wagon. If you saw me, you would say I look cool, though. Oh, <laughs> sunglasses <laughs> on. That sounds sounds like a bold statement. <laughs> Big if true. <laughs> Anything else along the journey? Uh, Testian's probably pretty quiet. He's got a lot on his mind. So. It's a, as you've come to expect at this point, pretty uneventful trip. Um, especially in this part of the continent. You know, you'd, you'd seen some people coming and going out towards Sagara Cove because that's a more of a a big port area that people might use to travel, but here people either pretty much set up shop in Timberbrook or they're not really in this area between here and the Pinella Pass. Um, there is something to be said for it. It's sort of nice to have quiet. Different parts of the group have been through different experiences the last few days, but none of it has been exactly peaceful or straightforward at times. So in some respects, it's actually kind of nice to have just an uneventful journey. Um, the prisoners are all well-behaved. Um, they seem to have resigned themselves to their fate at this point, and especially with how well they were bound for the last 24 hours, uh, they seem to not be any, uh, entertaining any ideas of trying to escape given their present predicament, and so... They're all just kind of sitting and or lying in the cart and not even moving around all that much. Just And occasionally they glance over at Karash and they see him watching them and they go back to looking at the base of the cart. <laughs> <laughs> a few hours pass, sun kind of goes overhead into more of the midday, afternoonish kind of position. And you see the familiar to three of you exterior of Glen Cogo approaching. Uh, this, of course, is new to Grail and Lena, but the other three of you were here just yesterday morning. Does it look any different at all? Is it burning? <laughs> this is, yeah, it's just a fire. Just... <laughs> you, you look over at the city, there's just a bunch of necklaces flying around oh. wreaking havoc. <laughs> Oh, God! <laughs> Not again! I'm just waiting what? for the mana cannon to strike again. Everywhere we go, I'm like, is it going to be a completely demolished, <laughs> just vaporized town? That's ridiculous. Falstock, that would be okay. It was that would be okay. It was disassembled and destroyed after the, the War of Calamity. Never to be thought of again. <laughs> no. The person who made it the first time is definitely not still alive. <laughs> and your father. Uh... <laughs> So, <laughs> are you guys just going to head straight to Lorene's place? Or is there anything else in town you wanted? I mean, you kind of have, especially the three of you have been there, you have somewhat of a lay of the land. There was you know, the inn. There was a couple. It was a small market area, but not a lot to it. Uh, you know where Lorene's residence is, so you can head straight there if you'd like. Drop off the dudes and bragging rights about said dudes. Oh, yeah. I guess we should go to the guard place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we could just, like, there's guards at, like, the gate, right? There are. There's a guard, or at least there was a guard then in front of Lorene's place. Could be multiple I'm just thinking, there. like, as soon as we show up at the gates to the town, yeah, like, as soon as we see a city too. watch, we could have like, informed them. Be like, hey, like, hey we did yeah, think. Yep, there were guards that kind of checked in on you when you came in last time, so that's easy enough to do. Um, you guys want to go in through the same gates as last time then? You're not exactly approaching them. It's not too far out of the way to just head to the southeast corner and go through. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so in doing so, one of the two guards there you actually recognized from the day before. The second one's different, but at least one of them kind of recognizes you. And instead of giving you the the runaround as far as questions and what you're doing there, he gives you a nod as you approach and says, Well, welcome back to Glencoga. What brings you here this time? 
And he's kind of looking in the back of the car, and he's going to give me like a... Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I will explain um, that some of my companions were here yesterday and that we have a meeting with... Um, uh, what's her name? L- Laureen DeGray, is that her name? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, if you remember me, and I kind of like <laughs> scurry up to the front. <laughs> and I've, I saluted you a couple oh, times. It's me again. <laughs> yes, how could I forget... We're friends now, I tell the turn to the group. Oh, God. And I nod, and I'm just like, oh, good. Um, we also captured some... <laughs> we also <laughs> captured some bandits uh, that were terrorizing a uh, the Sheepstop Hollow Ranch family, and we would like to uh, turn them into your custody. For justice. Yes. <laughs> well, can't have them... Harassing folks in the area, I suppose. So, come on through. If you if you head to Lorene's place, the town guard is not too far from there. There will be some cells there where they can be held. And until we figure out what to do with them, though, I have a suspicion. I know what Lorene's going to say already. They're pretty oh. docile now, like a bunch of domesticated cats, I reckon. Domesticated cats. <laughs> and he kind of peers <laughs> over your guys' shoulder into the back of the car. And he says. <laughs> They are surprisingly well behaved, yes. Yeah, they've seen a lot. Has not been a good couple days. They read nuts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, well, <laughs> head on inside then. You're welcome to head back into the city. Thank you. Um, then I'll just head on in. Are we just taking them straight to her or are we going to like take them to a jail or something? I think they were saying that the town guard headquarters is right by her place. Okay. Yeah. Probably just take them to the town guard. Just explain to them what we explained to the people at the front and call it good. Get them out of our cart forever. <laughs> yeah, these poor guys. For now. <laughs> I feel bad for them. <laughs> um, so the guy at the front gate can give you easy enough directions. And sure enough, not too far from uh, Lorene's estate, you're able to find this somewhat unassuming building from the outside that you wouldn't have probably looked twice at just walking around if you didn't know better. Um, but it's within, like, you know, feet of Lorene's place. You know, like, a couple hundred. And it sort of fills in the blank on, like, she only had one guard when you stopped by yesterday, and maybe she's capable herself, but it turns out that maybe the residents only had one guard because she's got some others that are close by if anything were to happen. <laughs> um, yeah. But you're able to drop them off. Watchmen inside just also kind of seems surprised by these five strangers bringing five prisoners in, uh, most of which look fine, one of which is looking a little worse for wear. Uh, and <laughs> you explain the same stuff to them prisoners, harassing, et cetera, et cetera. They, uh, they say they'll take them into the cells and check with Lorene as far as what she wants to do with them. Okay, how how's his leg look before we depart? Improved. Um, as you guys are unloading the cart to, you know, hand them over for custody, he seems to have a hard time putting weight on it, but it doesn't seem like he's able to at least... He can put any weight on it. It's not like he's hopping on one foot, but he's pretty heavily favoring the other one. So, like, it looks like it's going to be fine. It's just... It will probably heal. Yeah. He might be able to have most of its function back when it's done healing. Sure. No big deal. Crash, you've seemed pretty attentive to the prisoner. Dare I say you've had a change of heart? I, I, I did not want the guard asking questions about why his leg was coming off. Ah, of course. <laughs> Solid excuse. Don't worry, I'll keep your secret. I mean, if they saw... They By would, this point, they will, I, they will so... Tell them. <laughs> when I talk to Garash now, I say my quip, and then I just move on. Okay. I'm just walking away. <laughs> I know what's, what it's going to be. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so they lead them into a couple separate cells. Um, you get kind of a glare from that one cagey veteran guy that <laughs> still doesn't seem to be the biggest fan, but... That's about it. The rest of them just kind of quietly head into the cells and seeming dejected, you know, resigned to their fate, etc. Um, and is that it? 
Yeah, I'm ready to move on if you guys are. Yeah. Off to see the Countess. Super far trip. Yes. <laughs> oh, she's a Countess too. Yes. Oh. Then I should stop referring to the other one as the Countess. Well, no, she's a Duchess. Oh! Because, okay. uh... Uh, shit, what's the city? Uh, Harnstead is a pretty good deal amount bigger than uh, Glencogo. And as such, it has a more powerful slash more influential ruler. Uh, okay. Heading to Lorene's place. I don't know, Michelle and Lena. Michelle and Lena. Michelle and Michaela, do you remember the description of said place? Uh, How much attention were you paying to the part that didn't involve you? <laughs> well, I know she has like a secret area in her house. I think. Wasn't it made of like bricks or something? Um, and her, she has like technology and stuff in her house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what Lena said. <laughs> Sick. L- Lena, go ahead and bring the bag of holding uh, in case we need to show Lorene what we're talking about. Okay. I strap it on my shoulder. I have it. I am ready. Okay. So you leave the wagon nearby, head to the relatively unassuming front door for Lorraine the Grey. A good-sized house, as mentioned before, but not. it doesn't look nearly as opulent as some of the other noble places that you've come across. Um, there is a guard outside who, like the others, acknowledges the ones that he recognizes. Um, kind of says offhand to you guys in particular, like a pointed remark of like, so you brought the others then, Yes. As you uh, requested, my lady, this is the entire fellowship. So uh, he basically raps a couple times on the door. just and Oh, I thought we were talking to her. No, I guard thought, outside. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> then I, that's what I'll say when we walk. It's a female guard. It's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my lady to the guard. <laughs> Tip the cap. <laughs> Neck okay. beard. Okay. Um, okay. He raps on the door a couple times, and it swings open, and the Countess is inside waiting for you, looking much like she did yesterday. And now I say that line. Yes. So short, wavy white hair, blue eyes, <laughs> unkempt fingernails, worker's hands, small scars. This is somebody who does a lot of work with something or other, perhaps machinery. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> who can all. say? Who can say? She says, well, good. I'm... Glad to see you can make it back. Come in, come in. And she gestures over to the sitting room where some of you were the day before. She says, well, I said I would try and find out what I could, and I at least have some information for you, and at least a little bit of what might help in the way of supplies. Wasn't able to r- rustle up a ton on short notice, but a few things that I think could be useful to you. So what would you like first, information or stuff? Uh, I would say Information. Agreed. Yes. So I reached out to some contacts who do some business regularly in Timberbrook. And if you do intend to go there, I think you'll be in luck. It sounds as though the Margrave is going to be out of town for at least a couple more days on business. Now, I don't have official word on where he is. So I can't tell you for sure when he's going to be back. uh, Nor can I tell you how he's traveling. But... He is certainly influential enough that he has his own teleportation circle, so he could be just about anywhere, and he could be returning on just about any notice. But by all accounts, he's supposed to be gone for at least two more days, possibly three. Well, thank you for that. That will uh, help guide our actions for sure. How went the uh, dissemination of misleading information? Well, the nice thing about being well-connected is you can... Get the word out pretty quickly. So for the most part, without digging into it, I think people will believe that you're back on the other side of the mountains. I don't know how well that story will hold up to scrutiny if anybody on that side starts asking around. I mean, it will fall apart pretty quickly, but at the very least, the misdirection should buy you some time. Well, thank you. I, we have a we have a new... Uh, we, you've already done so much for us. We... We have a new issue, unfortunately, that we would like your um, expert opinion on. But in a second, uh, you talked about supplies as well. She uh, fonzies the button on the wall that activates the conveyor belt where she got the refreshments yesterday. And the side hit 
Yeah. Uh, I'm realizing that most people watching probably don't know about the fonts. <laughs> and that makes, hey, me, oh God. makes me a little sad. Um, <sighs> Do you feel old, Mr. Winkler? Do you? God. I'm amazed he's still alive and kicking. Good for him. Um, and eventually, out of the conveyor belt, she picks up what looks to be three vials and a ring. Um, hands them to you, Isaac. And says, it was not a lot of time, as I mentioned, but these are potions of healing. And there are three of them. Hands them to you. Someone should jot them down. Yeah. And... Uh, this here oh. is a ring of protection. Uh, it may not be much to keep you safe, but every little bit helps. Ring of protection is an item, requires attunement, plus one AC, plus one to saving throws. Oh my god. It's so I'm good. Put it on immediately. <laughs> keep in mind, you can only be attuned to three items. You guys don't have enough magic items to be worried about that yet, but just what? looking big picture. Well, if a uh, recent happenings have been any indication we're definitely going to need all the help we can get uh, so thank you I suppose that's as good a segue as any into letting you know what we ran across the other day um, Grail do you want to tell it or um, I kind of look a little bit nervously at Lorene and I'm kind of I kind of just like Clearly, I seem kind of out of my element and, like, also talking to, like, somebody of that status. And so I kind of um, test, shy away from She, she test, sees test, your hesitation. Oh, sorry. She sees your hesitation and she kind of realizes, she's like, oh, where are my manners? I, I'm i Lorene de Grey. I met your companions the other day. She reaches out a hand to, like, shake yours. Yeah, and I, I will return that. Four to five um, damage. Uh, does the same <laughs> for Lena. I, 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 will, I will shake her hand and thank her for... Uh, taking the time to meet with us. I'm, I'm glad you could make it. I hope your companion spoke well of me, but uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. But uh, anyways, you were you were saying. Uh, Tessian will just show the necklace. And he'll be like, have you ever seen uh, anything like this before? And I'll start going into the background. And so I mean, for expediency, sake, I'll go over the full background. Uh, but just so you know, I'm going to be honest as much as I can, so I'm not going to hide any de- I don't even know what I would hide, but I'm going to just divulge everything along with Tessian and Grail. Tessian wasn't going to say anything at first. He wanted to see what she said right oh. from the get-go. But... I was still probably love launched into it, so unless you want to stop me, though, and be like, well, I want to see what she has to say, I would just... No, it's fine. Okay. So she sort of looks it over, kind of listens to Isaac and gets up to speed on that aspect of the story. Um, takes a moment to think afterwards, and she kind of like gestures as though she's going to reach out to it. She says, may I? I don't know if it's a good idea unless you have... Um, unless you have an idea of what it is. Uh, we ran into some trouble with touching uh, and generally handling of it. Oh, I'm, s- I'm sorry. This is Grail's. My mistake. I wouldn't stop you. Go ahead. I would... <laughs> it's falling apart. I would ask Lena to pull out the... Um, and I, I'm going... Uh, oh, I... Uh, <laughs> oh, Jason. <laughs> the face of concern. Just, I just imagine you pulling this out. It's like, oh, we got this... <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> that, is, that crossed my mind, too. It might be freaking out. Um... So anyways, Isaac, you were going <laughs> to gesture to me. <laughs> yeah, to to pull out the... Uh, okay, well, I'm going to be really... Okay, if I reach into the bag and I, f- like, grab it, is it... Do I feel it doing anything or is it, like, not doing anything right now? Uh, let's see. As I recall, bag of holding, basically, you think of the item you want and reach in. So you can think about it. You reach in. You feel okay. for the chest. You feel its familiar exterior. Okay. This is familiar as you are with it. Yes. Uh, but you know you're grabbing the right item. Yeah. And... No, doesn't seem to be doing anything. I'm going to very slowly start to pull it out. And then if it starts to freak out, I'm going to throw it back in again. So as you pull the chest out of the bag and it clears the exterior, so it's basically all the way out. Okay, it's going back in. No, I'm going to grab it Ah! from you. 
as you're getting ready to throw it in. Okay. (laughs) I want to make sure she gets a good look at it. I don't know if I'm going to open it. Well, it's locked. So. Oh, and okay. Yeah, you're right. Um, And I'll, I will tell Laureen. So it's this that we're dealing with as the other half of the necklace you see on Tessian, which I wouldn't have stopped her from touching if you want to do that. Yeah, Tessian will let her touch it, but not remove it. Yeah, like, she's so only it's... she always wants to like you know cradle the brooch, turn it around, look at the back of it. Mm-hmm. Um, upon you pulling the chest out and hearing this sound now, which continues at about the same regularity at this point, which is pretty fast, um, she kind of gives you a furrowed brow of <laughs> what in the world is that? And she says, "Well, I don't know if it's going to help exactly, but let me grab something real quick." And she heads off in the direction of her. Uh, hidden vault pulls the book slides open heads inside and she comes out wearing what are almost like the gloves that Homer wears at the nuclear power plant (laughs) yeah (laughs) the big gloves Dr. Horrible style gloves you know same idea big let's keep using references from 20 years ago carry on (laughs) hey I use the fawns I'm trying to be a little more relevant Um, comes out with these what appear to be like special gloves. And she says, I don't know if this is enough to protect against magics necessarily, but it's made of something similar as the vault. So perhaps I can handle it with a bit more care. Do you, you want us to open the chest? Well, I don't know about, I don't know about that just yet. Okay, (laughs) good. Because I would have some concerns last time it exploded. Um, Yes. And she, her brow froze again. Yeah. (laughs) So I hand it to her. So she kind of, you know, holds it in her hands. I guess not a very big chest, but she's kind of turning around, looking at it, kind of inspects where the opening would be, like the slit there that's locked, obviously, but she's looking at it just to see what it's kind of made of. Um, hands it back to you. Does the same with the necklace now with the glove. Kind of Again, she's not trying to remove it, but she's looking it over. Kind of She, she kind of like holds a hand to reassure you, and she just lifts it up just enough to where it's like it's kind of like even with your chin she's not trying to pull it off but she's just kind of like seeing how far it pulls if it's you know if it's attached well if it's actually solid around the back um and she says i can't say i've seen anything like this no i magic isn't exactly my forte if anything we've been trying to develop more countermeasures for magic than we have been trying to work with it but i mean in my line of work certain relics and other magical items come across this city's radar on more than one occasion. Some people are storing an assortment of interesting items in our vaults, obviously. For their privacy, I can't talk about them, but let's just say I have seen some. Um, Can't say I've seen anything like this. So you're saying, and she's kind of like verifying what you told her in the background, so you're saying there's an identical one of these in there Almost, like there's some differences, and now they're reacting to each other, or? Yes, uh, specifically, th- this one, we've taken to calling it the defiled necklace, is the same as that one, but looks more weathered. There's a, there's a crack where the stone is on that one. Um, and thus far, we haven't been able to test it, a lot, and I'm hoping for your opinion as a woman of science as well. Uh, when it was threatening to whisk Tessian out of this dimension or something, putting on that necklace, the one he's wearing now, seemed to counterbalance that. Uh, it just seems like, except that now, if I make physical contact with Grail there, who wore this necklace previously, uh, the other one in the chest seems to draw from her in some way. Uh, yes, another variable. <laughs> and just for the cherry on the top, uh, Grail is also having nightmares uh, where the necklace is calling to her, we'll just say. And, uh, and Grail's nightmares uh, are not yeah. to be trifled with. Half the time they're visions of the future or the... But it's hard. We don't know. <laughs> She's taking this all in. It's a lot for Lorene in this particular morning or early afternoon now, I suppose. Yeah, has she had her coffee yet? Like she has. She has. She's awake. She's ready to go. But all this is a little bit more than she was expecting. She thought maybe she'd pass on some information and you'd be on your merry way. 
Um, but she's thinking about it, and you can see the wheels turning. Um, and she says, well, I have a couple of things we could try, but they will be somewhat dangerous. What do you have in mind? <laughs> I well. think we're open to hearing it. Our own ideas were dangerous as well. It seems from the way you talk about it that it's connected to Grail, and she kind of nods in your direction, Grail. Um, this vault of mine has that magic-resistant property to it. We could try bringing the chest inside of it, closing it, and opening it within those confines. I suggest we keep Grail separate from it and see what happens, at least the first time. What tests you want to do here? I mean, I... I, I like fiddling with things. It's sort of what I do, but only to a certain extent, only when it's not dangerous. And while I have some things that might help mitigate it a bit, I, if, if, this, if this is the scope we're talking about, it may be beyond even my capabilities. I don't know. Our only other good idea, um, idea was to have Grail put on the necklace. It seems to be calling to her and... Speaking of variables, Tessian seems to be a variable that does not belong and could be... It could be reacting negatively to that. I mean, we could also put Tessian in the vault or maybe have a couple of us in there try removing the necklace if that's a step you wanted to take. But again, I, I defer to you on how far you're willing to push this. Well, what if to start we put... Uh, one group, either the necklace or Tessian and Grail, in the vault, and you do the touch, and we see if being disconnected from uh, the from within the confines of the of the vault will change anything. Yeah, Grail, I'm let's, sorry, let's... we have to poke and prod you for this. Ah, <sighs> yeah, I know. Uh, Tessian's like, well, well, I mean, we could attempt it at least a little bit easier, Lena. Did the box feel like it was moving when it was inside the bag of holding? It wasn't moving in the bag of holding. It wasn't until I pulled it out of the bag that it began to um, shake again. Well, I could always try touching Grail when it's inside the bag. Does seem easier. Yeah. To start. Grail, I'm so sorry. I'm afraid this day is going to end with you being poked. At least five times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, as long as some of y'all will heal me up, uh, it's not a good feeling, but I know we're all in this together. Uh, I, I put a hand on your shoulder and say, um, we'll be here for you. So, Okay, so chest in the bag? Yes, I've put it back in the bag now. Thumping stops as soon as it basically breaches the barrier, but it's fully inside the bag. Okay, mm -hmm. I I tap. reach out my hand to for Grail to hold like, and I say it's not biting the bullet, but it's here if you need it. Um, Tessian will just poker, just boop again. Lorraine takes a couple steps back uh, before this happens, <laughs> instinctively. Um, so you poke her, Grail. You immediately are like tensed up. And as Tessian removes his finger, nothing happens. Oh. oh. Well, that's a good start. If it's in the bag of holding, you two can still make contact, so it's a temporary solution. Tessian, do you feel any different when it's in and out of the bag at all? I mean, do I? No. Okay. Yeah. No. Tessian's like, no, I'm afraid... Whatever happened to me might be a bit more permanent. Now you know why I lost sleep thinking about this last night, Lorene. It's uh, quite the puzzler. She says, well, I do have somebody who is somewhat skilled in healing. Could call them over and have them take a look at you. I... It's hard for me to go off of much based on what you described. It's just like this lethargy and... Uh, general kind of unease and sickness, but could be worth a shot. I don't know how quickly you intended to part, though. It seems like, well, I think we are of the mind that we should try to resolve this before we go anywhere else. But, uh, and he kind of looks at the bag of holding. He's like, perhaps I should try to remove the necklace now. 
How long until the healer is here, Loreen? If you send out for... If I, if I send word, maybe an hour or two. Nothing too bad, but it would take a bit. He usually has prior business to deal with. I mean, we have capable healers here. I'm of one that if it's an hour, we just wait and we get all the help we need if we do need it. I don't think that's a bad idea. I think we should approach this with caution and get all the assistance we can. So Lorene nods and she heads back towards... Instead of the vault this time, she heads towards what appears to be some kind of workshop as you get kind of a fleeting glance inside the door behind the kitchen as she goes into it. Um, goes to apparently make contact through some means. Uh, Tessian well, I guess we uh, better get uh, comfy then. We're going to be here a little bit. So, Lorene comes back out in a moment, says maybe an hour. Um, he'll head over as soon as he's done with what he's working on at the moment. Uh, brings out tea, water, delightful little cookies. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Nice. <laughs> she doesn't have the aura or the air of a noble and you already know at least the three of you that were there yesterday you already kind of know why that is because her roots are different than a lot of them um but she does seem to have at least decent taste as far as you know like she's trying to be a proper host she's you know she's serving on pretty nice things not like fine china but just everything she has is well put together um there's a lot more metal in what she owns than say like the duchess back in harnstead who had you know Fine china and whatnot. Yes, uh, do the the tongue thing like uh, Gene Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she kind of uses this time in between to get to know Grail and Lena a little bit better. You know, asks you about where you're from, talks a bit about her background, and tries to I don't want to say ease the tension, but you know, just like get you guys in the same playing field as the other ones who were there the day before. Yeah. So a little under an hour passes, and there's another double rap on the door. And uh, inside steps a <laughs> a female that looks more like Lorene than you might have expected. Hmm. And she looks a little bit younger, um, a little bit less uh, blue collar. Uh, but as she enters, Lorene says... Well, this is my sister, and she, unlike me, does have some capacity for magic. I think if there's anybody who might be able to help, it's her. She kind of exp- gets her up to speed real quick, you know. And Tessian introduces himself, goes through all the proper, you know, <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That stuff. Yep. Yeah, yeah, the stuff yeah. crash hates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The usual, the gripping grin. I give a mm. polite bow and introduce myself as well and thank her for coming and, you know, formalities and such. And she introduces herself as Lunaire de Grey. She says, so, Lorene tells me you haven't been feeling right since some event with these items. And she's kind of gesturing at the room and, you know, she doesn't have the full scope of what happened, but she's got the basics. Uh, and Tessian is like, yes, I've uh, been feeling uh, weaker. I'm not not all there. Um, some might say I'm down 10 HP. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, it's just ever since my ever since you know I've, I've interacted with this item, it's, it's this necklace. It's it's taken a lot out of me, and I haven't been able to recover. She says, well. Let's see if there's anything I can do about that. Uh, come over here and sit, if you would, please. And she takes you back to the sitting area as you sit down. Kind of checks you out. Sort of doctor's appointment-y. Not with the full scope of instruments or anything, but, you know. Checks your eyes as you kind of follow movement. Looks in your ears. Checks your pulse. Just kind of getting an idea of what might be going on there. She says, well, on the surface you seem fine, but that usually means there's a magical effect at play. Let me try something, if you don't mind. And she puts a hand on your shoulder. And you take four points in a crowd, damn it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and she casts Greater Restoration. Mm. 
Oh, well, Lottie Da with her greater restoration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is uh, a little more. Yeah, a little more level five caster than me. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah, <laughs> a little, a little bit a little stronger more... than you guys are at the moment. Yes, a little more level five soul. Star. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, whatever. <clears throat> and Tessian, as this warmth kind of flows through you from this, as she's channeling the spell, you feel better. Your hit point maximum returns to what it was. Mm. Oh, that's great! But also, I'm standing like uncomfortably close to them. Is this <laughs> she's, happening? Ho she's hovering. <laughs> I'm hovering. Yes. Is he, is he healed? How's she? How's the patient, doctor? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Will my paw be cured? Um. There is still this vague sense of unease that's difficult to quantify. You feel like yourself again. In the game terms, your hit points are back to normal. There is still something that doesn't quite feel right, and you're not entirely sure what that is. But you don't feel like atrophied anymore. You feel pretty much like you should overall. Just this kind of like lingering like... Uh, whether it's something that you went through or just the th memory of it or what, you're just kind of like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm back to normal, I think, but something's kind of like, uh, not really sure. And it's asking lots of now. It's like, oh, I feel, you know, I feel uh, like I've got energy again. I think, I think that worked. Um, and then there's like a brief moment where he'll kind of pause and I was like, oh, well, something still hangs heavy. I don't think this is quite resolved yet, Grail, between you, me, and these necklaces. That'd be far too easy, wouldn't it? Indeed. Lunara um, says, well, if that worked, it means it was probably some kind of curse. Whatever you picked mm. up here, these type of foul magics tend to have a lingering effect on people, sometimes for weeks, sometimes forever without proper treatment. Uh means these necklaces might even be more dangerous than we thought. 